Hi, I'm Paul Jacob. I'm the CEO of Mental Health America of Southeast Florida. We provide a variety of services, including parenting services, kinship services, mentoring services for children. We offer CEUs to uh, professionals in the community, and we also have the Nine Muses Art Center. The Nine Muses Art Center has been in operation for close to 25 years. We believe that providing services to adults uh, around the arts to help them with the recovery and maintain a sense of community are very important aspects of what we do. We're very happy to serve this community and continue to look to serve our community for many, many years to come. I hope you enjoy this program today. It's really one of our proudest moments and we're happy to share this with you. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Exhibit 302. A grant in support of this exhibit was awarded to Mental Health America of Southeast Florida, Nine Muses Arts Center by the following funds at the Community Foundation of Broward. Gay and Lesbian Broward Community Fund, Richard Frisbee and Edward Burkhart Fund, Charles L. Ross Fund, the Robert Elmore Family Fund, Everett H. Metcalf Jr. Unrestricted Fund. Named for the original diagnosis code for homosexuality, Exhibit 302.0 is an exhibit that explores the intersections between mental health, sexuality, and pathologization. I'm Chris Yoplin, Adult Services Director of Mental Health America. This is Nicole Stores. I'm the Nine Muses Art Center Manager. I'm Laura Diaz-Yarse. I am the Supervisor for Power of Tears. We felt that it was really important to recognize mental health, illness, wellness in um, the LGBTQ plus community because as we know and we've been doing for a long time, uh, mental illness doesn't care um, where you're from, who you are, what's your gender, it can affect all of us. It's also important to note that people within underserved communities or in communities um, that are LGBTQ plus um, oriented often still face discrimination and that discrimination can have its own trauma leading to disproportionate rates of mental health issues within, well, our community. And in March, as we all know, we hit the pandemic, um, which caused a little shift in programs, so we get to experience this together virtually. Could you state your name and preferred pronouns? Yes, I am Jillian Blake of Jillian Blake Fine Art and my preferred pronoun is she. Why did you answer the call for Exhibit 302.0? Exhibit 302.0 um, to me was um, just an amazing opportunity to get the word out uh, for the LGBTQ community um, as well as shining a spotlight on mental health issues and when I read what the call was for and who it was for, it really resonated with me and that's why I chose to do it. I feel like my art kind of spoke to what the exhibit is about. Please explain the medium used and the process of creation. Okay, so we'll go with this one first. This is um, labeled impossible. Um, this was done in an acrylic and oil pastel uh, medium. When I went into this painting, um, I was very chaotic at the time. My mind was in a very low, um, overwhelmed state. And all I kept thinking was, this is impossible. So as I was kind of getting out my emotions onto the canvas, I began to almost go into the journey and realize that not only is the word impossible, um, was it, it so important to me at the time, but when you look at the word, I'm possible is in it. And so as I was going through the painting, I began to shift my focus into the impossible, into I can do this, I'm possible. And so it went from a dark space into a very light space. Um, and I kind of uh, did that on purpose, especially with the pinks and the blacks um, kind of contrasting each other. So that's kind of where this one was. We'll move over to this one. This one is a neutral nude. The story behind this one was I went into it to do a figure study, as most artists do, we use ourselves as the subject. 
And so I had taken several images of myself in this position and I kind of wanted to do a study of, of it, of my body. And when I painted the black outline first, I stepped back and I realized this looks nothing like me. This is not my body. <laughs> and it almost took on a different role of representation of this could be anybody's body. Um, to me, the black portion looked like a more masculine figure. So I went over it in the white because I didn't think it should just take the connotation of a masculine image. I wanted it to take on all images. So I created the white line to give it a more feminine feel. So when you step back from the image, you see that it is one human. It is not gender specific. Um, and when you look at somebody from behind, you can't tell what their gender is. And it's, it's really not important what um, somebody's gender is or how they identify it how they are as a human. Um, the wings uh, signify angels. We're all angels of our, our world or however you believe. We're all angels of that. And I tried to incorporate all colors of the rainbow, again, just to be inclusive of my um, brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community. And um, that's kind of where this story went. And I'm very proud of this piece. Uh, because the, the LGBTQ plus community is super, super important to me. I have family members that are a part of that community and I, I've seen their struggles throughout my life and I can't imagine what they must have gone through. Um, and so this is super important to me for that reason. Hello, I'm Axel Martinez. After I read the whole purpose of the exhibit, um, I was really motivated by expressing the lack of communication that we're living in right now. And immediately thought of this piece because it brings in cross-cultural elements that can be so disconnected from one culture to another, when in reality, in certain cultures, none of these things that are so important to us matter at all. What matters to him is to heal people. For us, the brand Versace and other things that might make it into these, these uh, remote places really doesn't mean a thing. So this is a mixed media. It's mainly an acrylic painting. Um, I wanted to keep it as an analog palette, which means that all the colors are adjacent in the color wheel. And I just went through magazines and magazines and look for pieces like a puzzle that would fit into the piece. So the process was painting the basic structure of the face, then look at the uh, color scheme and, and uh, subject matter that would fit in my message. Uh, once I collected all the pieces, then I just freely went in and added some highlights with an acrylic pen, added the interest of the colors and the shapes and then uh, added the pieces onto the uh, acrylic painting and then I completed the painting. Um, my artistic outlet was really buttery, but when COVID hit, I couldn't really have access to the studio and I decided I have to look for something to keep doing art. So I joined this um, online class, uh, it's called Ball Color Bootcamp and started painting. I just went full force into it. That was in June. Uh, today, I got offered to be a mentor for other students in the online uh, school, and they asked me the same questions. There are a website where we can see your work, and she actually asked me to add all of the paintings that I've been doing to the same site. So it's my name, it's www.axamartinez.com. Three questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is, could you please state your name and your preferred pronoun? Hi, my name is Rick Aldred and um, I identify as he. Okay, that's good. Um, the next question is, what uh, compelled you to enter the 302 exhibit? Uh, there seemed to be a lot of opposing forces happening 
in the, in the gay community, the LGBTQ community, we're taking steps forward and people want to like take things back. Um, and I thought that's like, just like a little pin being stuck in the community to just label us. So what grew out of that was this idea of opposing forces of wanting to grow and yet still being hit by little stings and arrows that that other people try to define us. And uh, these opposing forces, I think, are hard, they're challenging, but they we're gonna still grow despite it because you can't stop it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that would lead us right into your process and your medium and how you constructed your piece and your uh, meaning behind it. Okay. So I love using paper as a medium. Uh, I, I love paper sculpture, origami, kirigami, all these different styles. I think they, there's a, there's a, because it's made of paper, there's a natural quality to it. So I decided to use origami and kirigami, which is paper cutting. And then as I was reading some of the material that, but what's going on? Do they want to take things out? Do they want to put things in? Uh, we're always, it's always kind of unsteady. And uh, I put into this a quote by Andrew Sullivan, who wrote Noonsday Demon, that despite the situation, you become the person you want to be. Hi, my name is Mark Flanders. My preferred pronouns are he, him, and his. And this is my piece called Unconditional Love. This is a manifestation of what my grandmother taught me when I was a teenager. She taught me how to crochet. And she also taught me that I was worthy of being loved no matter who I am or what I am. And uh, this always brings me back to her sitting on the couch with her in her little old house that was way out in the country. I used to go visit her and we would sit on the couch and we would crochet together. So it's like, whenever I wrap this around me, it's like she's sitting next to me again. And this is a portrait, a self-portrait uh, of myself as a silver daddy leather muscle bear. The, uh, the setting is in the Ramrod. And this is a depiction of the, uh, the shadowy dark bar where men go to hunt at night or to be hunted. Um, you can see my face is intentionally left shadowy and uh, indistinct to give it a sense of anonymity, of uh, mystery of fantasy and uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. First question is, if you would for us, please clearly state your name and your preferred pronouns. Um, Edward Christopher Nervy. Preferred pronoun, pronoun would be uh, Person. Very nice. Okay, so um, why have you answered the call for Exhibit 302? Well, in my opinion, everybody's an individual. We're all unique. Although we have a lot in common, we're all unique. And it's that uniqueness which, which makes us who we are. Absolutely. Yeah, so, for sure. It's, it's, uh, it's an experience I've had that is quite, uh, quite extraordinary to go through. Um, but um, I figured it was kind of appealing, so I made a statue of it. Uh, this 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 occurred. This uh, phenomenon occurred from gender dysphoria. I was very uncomfortable as a male, the, li living the masculine role, 
So I decided to go underground and, and live it as a female, sort of, you know, as much as I could. It's very difficult, very difficult being a woman, <laughs> especially when you're not, not feminine, you know, you're not born that way. It's very difficult, but. Um, could you explain the medium that you used and the process uh, that you used to create your piece? I used um, a steel window screen for, for uh, armature and I coated it with um, slurry, which is like, uh, like about toothpaste consistency clay. I brushed it on, I made the armature, the legs and the arm and the head and everything, and brushed it on, just kept shaping and shaping it with uh, water and uh, slurry. Then I glazed it and uh, that's it. For the camera, would you please clearly state your name and your preferred pronoun? My name is Katie Leonard. My preferred pronoun is her. Uh, why have you answered the call for Exhibit 302? I answered the call. Um, I I spoke with a, a few other members who were who decided to do a piece for it, and I decided to read the description. And when I read it, I had this sort of image just immediately come to me, and I just felt really, um, really motivated to bring it to life. I thought that it was a message that needed to be heard, and um, it gave me a, a good excuse to get back to art. If you could please explain the medium that you used and your process of creation. Uh, I, this is a mixed medium piece. I felt that the Hello My Name Is stickers would really um, symbolize well this whole labeling um, that we experience as we're, we're going through, um, as we're going through the maze of mental health. Uh, what, what I experienced was it became my identity. When people were talking about me and I was in the room, when my labels came before my name. I was labeled by friends and family as Crazy Katie, not Katie anymore. So I lost myself in that. And I think a lot of people do. The carrot, of course, for me, I think represented what, what help there is, how limited that help is. Uh, the fact that it's dangling just out of reach, sort of like a tease, like here's a brochure, doesn't it look all good? And then you go to the facility and you realize there's no smiling faces. There's no, there's no wonderful care being provided like, like they have, or like they make it seem. The first question is I would like you to clearly state your name and your preferred pronoun for the camera. My name is Keith Morris. Everybody calls me Keith. My pronoun is Mr. Mr. Wow. All right. Um, okay, so could you explain uh, the medium that you used and your process of creation? I used a medium of clay. Uh, I made a wind chime out of it. And uh, I processed it, rolled it out, smoothed it out the other time. You, you just put a cookie cutter to cut the pieces out, the circles in that, and the lights to put the quarter moons in. And uh, fire the glaze, it was a rainbow. So it says, so self acceptance. Well, I have this self acceptance. For instance, for between the new moon and the first days, I, I, I came to accept myself. Maybe, uh, maybe I am gay. And the uh, quarter moons to the new moon, or the quarter moons from the crescent moon, the realization that yes, I am gay and sharing it with some of my friends. Oh yes, it definitely de deals with my acceptance of being gay. Mm -hmm. uh, is there anything else that you want to add that we didn't cover? Anything else that you want to say about the exhibit or, um, or uh, the LGBTQ community, anything like that? Yeah, I think the LGBTQ community is a very strong community. I'm glad it's there. state your name and preferred pronoun. Uh, my name is Darren Thompson and my preferred pronoun would be spirit. And why have you answered the call for exhibit 302? Uh, 302 had a calling for me because uh, the progress that 
uh, this movement of LGBTQ has been taking it was at check in 2020. And I find it to be a profound time to teach others how far we have come and not to rest on your morals and just think that everything's gonna be okay because progress could be easily lost. And I found that expressing this through art was uh, the best medium for this influx in time that we are at. Could you explain your medium and your process of creation for us? Uh, the medium uh, acrylics, I haven't really done much in terms of an exhibit before. Uh, so my process was to be uh, more straightforward to the point with Frank, <laughs> and, to be Frank, and to uh, give homage to the person that really needed to be attributed for the progress that we've made. Uh, and when I was told about 302, I was perplexed as to what to produce for it as a strong symbolism of uh, everything. And with 302 uh, and homosexuality, you know, was used uh, as a, a means to torture people, as I thought. And I couldn't really figure out a way that would be uh, pleasant to the eye, but still train you to learn something through it. And I, I was concerned, like I didn't want it to be too graphic. And I had thought, what am I gonna do? Somebody getting shock therapy or something like that. And I, I couldn't see anything pleasant in that. And literally about two months into the pandemic, I was thinking about it and I said, what am I gonna do, a unicorn in a straitjacket? And there it was. And uh, I really wanted to give it uh, <laughs> all I had. And so, you know, you, you throw a little glitter and you bejewel it and there you go. The unicorn being the, the spirit of true freedom and love. And it, does, it doesn't really have to do with sexuality. It has to do with the person, your spirit, and how you are constrained by everything from religious symbolism, that's the crown of thorns, uh, to the modern day uh, straight jacket through the same side of, you know, practically padded walls. And I just wanted to, it to be uh, this. <laughs> I love that you have the number 302 because that is the diagnosis code. So, and, and a step further with the pink triangle. The pink triangle was really something I wanted for historical purpose to, for us to really realize and engage what does that mean uh, and where did that come uh, from? It's, it is the, the gas camps of Nazi yeah. times, and we are so close to repeating history. It's Right, well, we may have dodged that bullet, but thank goodness. I highly doubt it. And it's not over yet. It's the fight is real. It's continuous. And, uh, you know, I won't have my own children to uh, teach and go forward. So that's why I chose art. It'll be around for a while. And 2020 is an influx that we need to really take this movement seriously. Um, Christopher Yoplin. I go by he, him, his. Can you give us your the names of your pieces and the medium? Okay. Um, Edge of Complacency and Illusions of Freedom. I took my experience in, in, in the late 80s and what really molded me as an artist um, and put those images around the base. When I marched, um, it was a protest. It was not a not a pride celebration that, that we get to have today. That whole sense of what I believe I'm celebrating, living life, I I also live in true fear of it all going away. And um, 
finding these glass rods and incorporating them as a, a prison cell, if I may, or or a boxing yourself into a corner where you don't have anywhere to move, but then but then allowing the the viewer to oh, can you see that on that video? So the, having this uh, rainbow transparency shining through a a glass. Um, prison uh, that also has that ability to be shattered and we need to shatter the laws and the ar archaic rules that are still on the books today. Do you want to explain why you picked 302? Or... 302 together was really to showcase the absurdities at times. Um, a historical presence of having it removed from the DSM, it really calls to light what's the next illness that we will no longer label and or um, stigmatize because I believe that society, in order to make itself feel better, always has to have a little man. And I don't want to live in a world that has a little man. Can you give us your name and pronouns? My name is Nicole Storrs. My pronoun is she, her. Can you give us the title of your pieces and their medium? Uh, so the title is Here There. Uh, the medium that I used is uh, acrylic on canvas. The letters are made out of cardboard. Um, I cut them out with an X-Acto knife and applied them with uh, carvable modeling paste. I'm a textural artist, so I like surfaces that are raised. Uh, they're very attractive to me. So I built up the surface over several passes uh, to create what you see. So that when the paint was applied, I could make it look multi-dimensional. Can you tell us what, uh, what about 302 attracted you to this show? I think it's very important um, for people to be able to uh, feel comfortable in being who they are. Um, I don't I wouldn't necessarily use the term accepted only because everybody's not going to accept you no matter what you do. It's just like saying everybody, you need everybody to like you. I don't like everybody, so everybody's not gonna like me and I don't care if everybody accepts me. Tolerance is another word that would be fantastic for um, the planet to have, tolerance. But I, I, and a little bit of adversity, I feel like makes us stronger. Um, so there's nothing wrong with that. But I think it's important to be able to express who you are and feel comfortable enough within yourself. And I know that the only person that I can control is myself. I can't control everybody else. So um, sort of harnessing that power of being able to control my person to be, feel comfortable to express who I am. Um, that is the reason why I wanted to uh, join the exhibit and what I was trying to get across with the diptych that I have is sort of two sides of, a, of, of an event maybe, not necessarily, the, the place and time isn't set, um, it's not specific, it, it's sort of whatever it means to the viewer. But as you can see, it says, here we go, and then there we go. So this is um, the before, the anxiety of uh, getting ready to feel comfortable in expressing who you are to uh, the world. Um, we're not all born ready, just like most of us are afraid of public speaking. You kind of just have to get used to it, right? And figure out how you want to do that. So this is sort of like the breath, the, the inhale, the holding the breath. Okay, here we go. And then this is the exhale of uh, there we go. Um, I mirrored the letters uh, just to sort of give the idea that 
Um, it's not stagnant and it doesn't have to be what we think it's necessarily gonna look like afterwards. We could we make up ideas in our heads how we think things are gonna be perceived or whether that's good or bad, you know, throughout the emotional spectrum. Um, and it's not always what we, uh, what we think and hopefully it's still okay because you know I can still read this right and it's still pretty so even though it's backwards it doesn't mean that it's wrong it's fine it it works just fine Could you clearly state your name and preferred pronoun? Yeah. Hi, my name is Coco Alarcón and he? Yes. Um, why have you answered the, the call for exhibit 302.0? Um, I, I make this series based in a very personal and, and intimate emotional healing. So when I read what is the base of the exhibition, uh, I think that will be fit perfectly, so I decide to participate. Okay, cool. Um, could you give us uh, a description of the medium and your process for creating? Uh, well, usually it's, it's photography, basically. Uh, the medium where was made was film over phone board. It's, it's a series of 22 portraits based in in my in my internal demons, that's that's where they are actually. All this process was made with my in my two years of therapy. So every time that I go to to session a new session, I need to show up to the therapist one photo and explain okay what was one him or her in that moment. You know so that's that, that's basically what I do. I I interview my demons mm -hmm. and I make photos of them. Could you give us your artist statement? Um, it, it's, I think it was made, uh, we're made with pieces, you know? I mean, it's, it's, it's who we are. I mean, we, we know precisely the pieces where we built each other, it's the pieces where we, the light we take it off from us, you know, that we are, I mean, like I explained to you before that, the change of, of, of house, of uh, country, that speak another language, your dreams that no are dreams anymore, you know, or, or, or that dreams like never will be happen. You know, that uh, people that love and one day are not next to you anymore, or mm -hmm. the new love that you do. I mean, all these change that make you who you are, or make you who be where you are right now. I think that the, the initiative that you have for based art in some kind of intimate thing f made from you this is very admirable. And and, and I want to take that the word to the rest of the artists. Thank you. Thank you for giving us that window, for giving you that, that opportunity to show uh, that very sensitive part of art. Like an artist always is very important to for us show the things where we we do or the things where we we create because it's, it's a piece of our soul so the first thing we would like you to do is clearly state your name and your preferred pronoun for us hi my name is christian adam doring and i prefer he him his second question is uh, why have you answered the call for exhibit 302 well I did that because I want to share my sculpture um, because I think it's uh, a positive expression of the call for the show about people's identity could you explain the medium used for us or the process of your creation sure I, I made my sculpture out of clay because uh, when you get a good look at it, it's got some surprises inside. And so I had to build it up slowly in, in stages and that kind of affected how, how it developed into a kind of an organic shape. It's not a, 
uh, set cylinder. It's not, you know, it's got some changes in its form. I had always had the idea of having the figures kind of develop out of the form, but as I worked on it, it, it kind of surprised me too with some things that I did inside and, and uh, some other things that I was able to add, like the, the owl and um, you'll see some other critters as you look at it. Right, right, yeah, I was going to comment on the animals. Uh, I'm sure that there's some sort of, uh, that, that each one has like a symbolism to it. About what kind of animal they are than that particular definite animal with the exception of the one right at the top, which is a, um, a monarch butterfly. It literally changes its form. If you didn't know that this caterpillar was with this butterfly, you would never connect them. So that's, it's a, I think it's a, just a pretty cool example of how you can change and grow. Well, we, we all have a secret inside us and mine's finally coming out. <laughs> um, we congratulate you for that. Thank you. As I, it, it's, transitioning has been the best thing I've ever done for myself. Um, it's, it's amazing. I am definitely glad you, you feel empowered enough to express yourself through the art and join us um, within this exhibit. I thank you. Thank you.